only know the cause would bring you all of this, how about a glass of genetically modified yeast to taste like cow milk? Okay, we're gonna talk about that. This needs to be discussed, and I'm gonna teach you during that segment what a 19th century pastor once said about science. Which science would you have me believe? Then Dr. Deborah Bain, she's a pediatrician who's local. She's been a friend of mine for many, many years. And she's gonna talk about really the toxic world that our kids are growing up in. I, you're gonna love this, you're gonna absolutely love it. But before all of that, I'm gonna sit down with Dr. Fred Pescatori. Now he is the Dr. O'Hara's doctor. He's a physician from New York. And he's gonna teach us about a brand new probiotic and the reason he takes it. It's called RegActive. Of course, we wouldn't leave you hanging without a food segment. You ever heard of a steak roll? You will today on Know the Cause. Yeah, mine take three, three months of full time. <laughs> Dr. Fred Pescatori is with me right now. If you only knew what went on behind the scenes here, I have so much fun with this guy when he comes in. Dr. Pescatori is a physician, uh, works in the New York area, walks to work a uh, long distance. I love his stories. Um, and he's written a new book. And I contend this book is going to be a runaway bestseller because of its content. You just won't believe it. It's called The A-List Diet. And in this book, which takes you several months to write. I mean, you literally stay home and you write these yourself. Well, I stay home and write. I mean, it, it, but it takes, you know, it takes probably a year or more while you're gathering the research, you're right. doing all of that stuff before you actually sit down and actually write the, and the book. And the chapter headings, I know exactly what you're talking about. A couple of times in this book, you talk about the importance of something that might be new to some of you folks, probiotics. There's an antibiotic, right? And there's a probiotic. Um, probiotics, I believe, now I'm going to take a leap of faith here. I take probiotics every day. Good. Um, is As that, do is I. Is that right? Yeah. I think I really know that what a good probiotic does is assist you with breakdown and a word called metabolizing, you know, of, of making protein, making good nutrition out of the food you eat. I think it assists in that. Uh, you talk about in the book two different probiotics. Dr. O'Hara's probiotics, sure. love. Reg Active, love, love. What's the difference in the two? Well, the difference is really, Dr. O'Hara's probiotics is a full probiotic system. So it, it takes care of your gut. It repairs your leaky gut. If you don't have, if you don't have intestinal uh, dysbiosis, it will keep you from not getting it. But if you do have it, it will help repair that. So it does just what you were talking about. It is a true probiotic in all of its forms. RegActive, on the other hand, is a probiotic, but it's a specific probiotic that causes your body, that helps your body produce glutathione. Glutathione is an antioxidant, probably our body's best antioxidant that we have. It works in the liver. It helps the liver to detoxify everything that we're doing to ourselves. And it is, so, so the two, while they're probiotics, work, work completely differently. And I wish, I wish we had a better terminology for this, and I think we will, because as we're learning with the Human Microbiome Genome Project, yes, and yes. we're learning all the differences of what different probiotics do, I think we're gonna get to a point where it's not just how many billions are you getting, and we're just, I, I, think, I feel like right now we throw probiotics up against the wall and hope that they do exactly, something, right? Exactly. And the beauty of Dr. O'Hara is, is that it doesn't do that. It's not 20 billion, 50 billion units. It's very specific, and it's a live bacteria. And RegActive is a very specific bacteria called ME3. And it only and its its ability in the body is specifically to help us produce glutathione, that all-important master antioxidant. You know, people watching this show right now may have tummy problems, bloating, belching, gas, constipation, and so forth. Um, you can't, you're a clinician, you see, you know, thousands of patients. On average, how long does it take? Um, I guess that would be how bad is your dysbiosis? How bad is your leaky gut? Could a person No, it's actually how good you are. 
Like, okay. I, no matter how bad your dysbiosis is, you can repair it in three to four months if you follow everything I tell you to do. If you're working on if, if you accept responsibility. On, exactly. Okay, so do you recommend to your patients who come in, the ones who you feel have liver or, or uh, gut disorders, do you recommend both Dr. O'Hara's and Regactive? Yes, you have to take both. I mean, you know, a probiotic is for one thing, so that's what Dr. O'Hara's comes in. Reg Active, what the main ingredient is ME3. Reg Active is if you want to detoxify, if you want, it's good for immune health. I mean, anybody who, I mean, who doesn't want immune health? We yep. want it for, to protect us against flus. We want it to protect us from cancer. We want to protect ourselves from all of the things that our immune system breakdown causes, uh, you know, things to happen. And it also works against oxidative stress, which is super important. And that's what glutathione is all about. And the only way to get glutathione really is to take regactive because you cannot take glutathione in any other form and actually have it work. In the A-list diet, you talk several times about probiotics. Summarize, if you will, why it's important that people need to understand to take probiotics on a regular basis. Well, you have to have a healthy gut. If you don't have a healthy gut, if you've got that dysbiosis, then you're not healthy. All health starts in the gut. Our brain health starts in the gut, our heart health starts in the gut, our gut health starts in the gut. So it really all starts there. If you have arthritis, if you've got memory problems, if you've got all of those things, having a healthy gut supports our entire healthy person. So that's why you need to take probiotics and you also need to take Regactive. Thank you for the education you continue to give us, thanks. Thank you. Great book, by the way. Thanks. Nobody better to talk about a toxic world we live in, no, don't go away, stay there, than a pediatrician who sees toxicities. I was once told by a dentist that a pediatrician sees problems long before I do in the mouth of the child. Welcome Dr. Deborah Bain. She has a, a stealth practice here in Dallas, Texas. I'm so blessed that you could take a couple hours off and come in and film with us. I know what goes on there. Mm -hmm. uh, very, very busy because you do things differently. You and I have done segments together and we always talk about, hey, what goes wrong? Why do you see obese six-year-olds? Why are you seeing kids that can't communicate well? Why are you seeing bleeding skin? Mm -hmm. And so you give presentations to groups of doctors and this slide kind of blew me away as mm -hmm. to why. So I'll let you take over and right. teach us. <laughs> Actually, thank you for having me. Um, yes, I created the slide really to, to summarize. I'm such a visual learner and I think a lot of my uh, patients are too, to summarize really what's happening in our, in our very toxic planet. Okay, so first you have the foods that, you know, you look at the middle uh, picture here. This is, this is what our kids are eating. This is yeah. what our parents are feeding Fast themselves food. and feeding, you know, their kids. The standard American diet, you know, full of all the wrong fats, full of all the, the genetically mm. modified, uh, you know, sourced corn and soy and things like that. Then you have, you know, the things that, uh, you know, infection, for example, you know, in the gut we've talked about right. you know, in previous segments. Uh, you have the toxins that they're exposed to in the planet, whether they're spraying it on you in the sky, whether you're getting it from your plastic bottles mm -hmm. from the BPA lines right. mm -hmm. uh, or the cans that are BPA lined, whether they're dumping it into our water supply, they're spraying it on the crops. You know, even this Roundup Ready, right. you know, genetically modified seeds, it's just not natural. Yeah, uh, you're concerned about GMOs also. Absolutely. I, I really am too. Mm -hmm. I, I know we're really the only country right now getting them. We're a big experiment. But with children, you probably see this very early. Absolutely. I think yeah. that part of their chronic diseases that we're seeing so early on that I never saw 21 years ago really has a lot to do with this evolution of all of that toxic burden that that poor mm -hmm. little immune system is seeing. And what isn't represented there, because you were speaking to doctors, was medications. I mean, kids are on GERD medicine when they're three and four mm -hmm. years old, antacids. I mean, mm -hmm. kids are, every child's on antibiotics. It's like uh, coming of age. Mm -hmm. You gotta be on antibiotics. And one of my concerns, and you and I have discussed this, is moms taking antibiotics and having that mycotoxin in utero passed to the child. Um, we do live in a toxic world. What's the end result of all these toxicities? What you're seeing in your practice? Absolutely. I mean, it's just chronic disease. You know, kids that I've never seen, two-year-olds with celiac disease before. We have teenagers with severe autoimmune disease from lupus 
um, to Hashimoto's thyroiditis in 10-year-olds, this is the inflammation, the full-on toxic burden that their, you know, their gut dysbiosis, their toxic burden, their nutrition deficiencies, all of that compounded with a really uh, unhealthy diet, I feel like we're seeing. You're big, I'm told by people who love you, uh, that I happen to know in your practice, you're big on supplementation. Uh, Dr. Bain is much like me, our philosophies uh, converge. Sometimes it's not what you give to a patient that makes them better. Sometimes it's what you take from a patient that gets them better. You said there are four or five foods that are very commonly in a child's diet that you find them allergic to. What are those foods? Right. Typically it's gonna be dairy, yeah. uh, okay. uh, soy, wheat mm -hmm. is a, a big one, uh, corn, um, tomatoes, not so high on the list. Yeah, I mean, uh, this is fascinating and that's our kid's diet. You know, wheat is our kid's diet. Uh, let's talk a little bit about solutions. Here's a mom watching us in New Jersey, New York, California, mm -hmm. et cetera, who says, yeah, I'm worried about my child. Their bowels aren't working, their skin is breaking out, or they're prepubescent, and all of a sudden, you know, they got acne. Mm -hmm. oh, what would you offer, if this were your child, mm -hmm. knowing what you know as a physician, what would you recommend? I mean, I'd recommend, first and foremost, I do diet first. Okay. So that would be paleo-Mediterranean diet. It would be non-GMO. If you can kill it, you can grow it, or it can rot, that's a pretty safe choice. Maybe some probiotics, sure. certainly if they've been on antibiotics, uh, that's key. Yeah. And then omega-3s and maybe a multivitamin, you know, of, of a good source, you know, a food-based uh, yeah, food yeah. vitamin. Yeah, just a, a, a great friend, a great pediatrician. We have friends that see Dr. Bain, and we wanted her on because all her patients love her. Folks, if you're in the middle of America, we're in the middle of America. If you're anywhere outside of that and you want to see her, come on out, hop on an airplane, or go to Healthy Kids, plural, pediatrics, plural, dot com. Thank you for coming. Thank you. You know, candidly, I really didn't know what a steak roll was until we started on this venture. Folks, you're gonna want this tonight. Watch this. Today on Know the Cause, we are presenting another idea for a Kaufman Diet Dinner. This dinner is called Steak Rolls and is on the phase one part of the Kaufman Diet. Here is what you will need to make this happen. You will need eight thin slices of sirloin or flank steak, about four or five inches wide by eight inches long. You will need extra virgin olive oil, sea salt and fresh ground black pepper, fresh rosemary chopped. Then let's add bell pepper sliced into thin strips, one medium zucchini sliced into thin strips, one medium yellow onion, halved and then thinly sliced. Now here are the directions for the steak rolls. Note, if the meat is a little thick, use the flat side of a meat mallet to flatten it a little. Rub each side of the steak slices with a little extra virgin olive oil. Sprinkle with salt, fresh ground black pepper, and chopped rosemary. You can also make your favorite marinade and let the meat sit in that for an hour or so. Heat a tablespoon of olive oil in a skillet over medium-high heat and cook the vegetables until crisp tender. Then season with salt and pepper. Next, let's place some of the vegetable strips vertically on one end of each steak cutlet so when it's rolled up, the end of the vegetables are sticking out of each end of the steak roll. Roll it up and secure it with a toothpick. Repeat for each steak roll. Cook on a grill on each side for about two minutes or to desired doneness. Is that a cooking phrase? Or you can cook them in a skillet on medium to medium high heat until done. These steak rolls are a great dinner. You can also do this with chicken breasts. This recipe is on the Know the Cause website. You know, folks, if you haven't uh, recognized this already after 17 years of watching me, has it been that long? 
My shirts used to be gray and my hair used to be black way back then. It's a total transformation I've done. I'm a little bit different than most people in this field. Look, I, I uh, believe in the Bible. I read the Bible. I listen to it. I have it on audio, 365-day Bible. And folks, in the Old Testament, in the beginning in Genesis, how many times do they talk about with seed of like kind? Give your every green plant, every fruit with seed of like kind. So if I didn't adhere to that, I'd think that genetically modified seeds are fine, where you take a seed from something and put it into the seed of something else, merge it, and you get a whole new product, right? A, a hybrid product on the market. But I'm old fashioned that way, so I have to question all this genetically modified organism. It made common sense to me 20 years ago, we were gonna feed Africa, we were gonna take care of the world. Have we done that? And yet here you walk into a store, I'm telling you, you're eating genetically modified foods. You're not throughout Europe, but you are in America. Let's experiment with the Americans and see how they do, okay? So a glass of yeast milk, I just saw this on geneticliteracyproject.org. Sustainably produce, sustainably. That means we can keep making it over and over again. It doesn't say well produced. Sustainably produced cow milk made using genetically engineered yeast is coming to your breakfast table. Why? Can't we sustain cow milk? Doesn't that get it done? Are there cow shortage in America? Folks, this is all about patenting and it's a money business. I don't have a problem with that, I'm a capitalist. But you got choices, right? You can go to goats, you can go to cows, or you can go to yeast to get your cup of yeast milk. 10 studies, says the same group, 10 studies proving GMOs are harmful, question mark. Not if science matters. And what this group is saying, and they're, uh, look, I don't know them, they're probably a great group of people. What they're saying is those who are shaking their finger at genetically modified organisms just don't know science like we do. We're real scientists with real credentials from real colleges. Boy, we went there six years or eight years, and you know what colleges turn out, just brainy people, okay? We're so led, those of us who question what's going on, um, are so led to believe that you just didn't have enough college. College would have had you totally in love with genetically modified organisms. And then there's this, which science matters? I think you're gonna like this. This Kyle introduced me to this guy. His name is Charles Spurgeon. It was, I think he died in 1892 or something. 19th century English pastor. He once stated, which science would you guys have me believing? The exact science, and I put that word in there, the exact science of 50 years ago, today's exact science, or the exact science 50 years from now. Let that sink in a little bit. That's huge, isn't it? I mean, think about cars 50 years ago. Think about the precision made cars today. But my grandson is going to get in a car, just like Back to the Future, and zoom down the driveway and put it in some gear and propellers are gonna come up and it's gonna fly away. We can't see that today. Only science fiction said it, you know, 50 or 100 years ago. But that's exactly where it's traveling. Somebody was putting on my makeup the other day, the makeup person, and her wristwatch rang. And she said, hello, I'm busy, right? What, that's Dick Tracy, to you and me, that was absolutely unheard of, today or back then. Today, it's real, I saw it, it really happened. Can you imagine sleeping with a phone on your ear? Getting a call at two in the morning? Or, says Spurgeon, the science of 2016. Today, vaccinations, lots of medications, lots of doctor visits, lots of questionable food, genetically modified food, is on the market. Berkeley and your grandkids will say, you're not gonna believe this, but 50 years ago, they had these things called pharmacies. And what they did is for four hours, they'd sell you a pill for $100 that would erase your pain for four hours. What'd you do after that? You had to take another pill. How much was it? Another $100. I'm just telling you to keep your eyes peeled. I don't eat genetically modified organisms to the best of my knowledge. I'm not telling you not to. I'm just saying, where will we, what will we think of GMOs in the year 2067? Don't go away, more to come. 
You know, a major medical journal, I think it was last year, said that the mammography or a mammogram between the false positives and false negative results is about 58% accurate. What does Jenny say? Hi, I'm Jenny Herbacek with The Cancer Connection. According to the National Cancer Institute, the median age of which breast cancer is diagnosed is 61 years old. The median age of dying from breast cancer is 68 years old. Should the breast cancer metastasize, however, just 25% of those patients remain alive at five years after their diagnosis. The annual mammogram has long been marketed as a screening test, but numerous studies in the last decades reveal that mammograms have not lived up to their promise of saving lives with early detection. If you want to learn more about where we went wrong with this common screening test, read the new book by Dr. Ben Johnson called No Ma'am O Graham. For Know the Cause, I'm Jenny Hibache. Everybody knows about thyroid health, but do you know about adrenal health? Here are my top three strategies for great adrenal health. Number one, get some testing done. Usually it's saliva testing. They'll tell you about a hormone called cortisol and whether you're too high or too low, you'll kind of direct your strategies accordingly. Number two, if you're too high, rhodiola. This is a fantastic adaptogenic herb. It just makes you, ah, when your cortisol is too high, you're stressed out all the time and oh, it brings down the stress level. But some of us, number three, are too low. If you find out that you're too low, like I am, you guys, Here's what you need to do. Consider licorice. If you have too high of a blood pressure, you can't do licorice, but most people who have low cortisol need more licorice and brings the cortisol up and you feel better. The A-List Diet. What a great name for an A-List guy. You know, I've known Dr. Pescatori so many years. I've been to New York. His business over there is practice. He's a straight up guy. I mean, he is, I saw him on uh, Good Morning America a few years ago, and I thought, boy, he handles the camera well, and he really does, so thank you, Dr. Pescatori. He, of course, was talking about Reg Active. Folks, I'm on, and have been on for some time, uh, two doses of Dr. O'Hara's probiotic. Well, the same company brings you Reg Active now to assist you in making glutathione, a very important antioxidant, for your liver, so do heed what he's saying. There's a telephone number, pick up the phone. I, I think you can order the book through them, but ask them if they have the A-list diet also. Um, now, what did you think about Dr. Bain? Our kids are growing up diametric to how I grew up. I mean, it's absolutely amazing what's happening today with the millions of chemicals in their environment and so forth, so thank you, Dr. Bain, for that. What's your take? Would you drink genetically modified yeast milk? The choice is yours, folks. I, I gotta tell you, I've been wrong before in my life, and I might be totally wrong on this. I don't think I'm gonna ever have a glass of it, but the cool thing about living in America is we have certain inalienable rights, and we can drink that milk. And you can watch Know the Cause every day. Thank you for doing that. God bless you. Bye-bye.